I'm David Sanchez from Planet Earth. I play in a band called Havoc, and we're at Black Plastic in Dortmund, Germany, checking out some records here. And I picked up this classic record. This is by a band called King, uh, Queen. Um, I think the there's a lot of really good songs on here. It's very eclectic. There's a lot of really weird songs on here. Um, everybody knows, you know, Freddie Mercury and Brian May and Roger Taylor and uh, John D. Guys, people. Yeah, this is a a classic. It's got Bohemian Rhapsody on it and a lot of other really weird songs that make me really happy. This is really catchy and very interesting music. And if you haven't heard this record in full, I suggest you listen to it. Hi, Guillermo. Hey. I, I don't speak English that well. <laughs> uh, my name is Guillermo Izquierdo. I play in a band called Angelus Apatrida. It's uh, a band from Spain, from Albacete. And it's a pleasure to be in a record store with my friend David. I also own a record store in Spain. It's like crazy nowadays, I know. So I want to, to talk about my favorite band ever, which is Iron Maiden. And I couldn't decide in between, between these two albums. Oh, thank you. Because these two albums are my favorite albums from Iron Maiden. It's the first band I, I, I listened when I was like eight years old, and it was not this. I was watching the the video of the Life After Death, and it really blew my mind. It was like, wow, I want this. I want to be like this. I want to play that kind of music. I want to wear long hairs. I want to wear panties like they wear. <laughs> I want to look like a girl. Um, <laughs> So yeah, yeah. Do you remember that life after this? Like they are wearing that. Yeah, of course. Bruce Dickinson's bangs. Yes. Are really cool. Yeah. So here we are. <laughs> hey, mom. So I cannot decide nowadays between these two records. I think that they are awesome. I think they are the best albums from Iron Maiden, and they are the first albums and the last ones maybe with uh, keyboards. It was keyboards the first time with uh, Somewhere in Time and then Seven Sun. So I think if, if you are into metal, if you are into rock music, you shouldn't miss Iron Maiden, of course. If, 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 if you don't like Iron Maiden, you would know my friend, so beware. <laughs> I don't like Iron Maiden. You would know my friend. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. <laughs> um, I picked out this Angel Witch record because the name of the band is Angel Witch, the name of the record is Angel Witch, and the title track is the first first song on the album is called Angel Witch. So if that's not a good indicator of how powerful this is, I don't know what is. This band has a lot of uh, cool like guitar harmonies, kind of like Thin Lizzy, Iron Maiden, uh, Deep Purple kind of stuff. And this came out in 1980. This came out before Kill 'Em All, and it's super heavy, super metal. There's a lot of really cool guitar stuff. Uh, there's shredding. There's songs about witches and Medusa and Atlantis and Satan. So this is very metal and, in my opinion, ahead of its time. Uh, it's also very catchy. Uh, the songs are good. It's good songwriting. And um, production-wise, I think it's really, really cool because uh, it sounds old, but the snare drum sounds like a fucking cannon. It's a really, really cool sound. And um, people that don't know, check out Angel Witch. Uh, I think my favorite song on this record is probably um, Atlantis or Confused. Or Confused. However you want to say that. Depends how <laughs> European you want to be. That was funny. Hey, hola. Let me give it over to Guillermo here. Yeah. So it, it was like a very, very old school thing. But okay, I'm gonna talk about another old school thing. It's this. It's probably the best band ever. It's Pantera. I think that everybody in, in metal should know Pantera, of course. 
And this guy playing the guitar looks like Reese. Be it. Reese plays much better, man. Um, I think that this is what really put me into metal. When I was a little kid, uh, it, it, it was not the first record I, I listened from Ventura. The first thing I, I listened was uh, Far Beyond Driving. It was like, what the fuck is this? And after that I, I got into Pantera and, and, and then I listened to the vulgar display of power and then Cowboys from Canada. I think this is a fucking classic of heavy metal. Everybody should have this record at home and everybody should play every day this record. Every song is great. Every song, yeah. It's like this, everything is great. Everything is great from this band, I think, but this record is awesome. In, mm. in my opinion, Phil's vocals on this record are the best metal vocals ever recorded. Yeah. After that, he got into tracks and all this stuff or whatever. But on, on, on this record, he sings like Rob Halford, but like much he, better, like cooler than Halford. Yes. Yeah. It's like the 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 hikes that he is like screaming is like, how can you do that? <laughs> yeah, the hikes on Cemetery Gates is like it's shattered. Yep, it's shattered. Yeah, yeah. So I, I got that tattoo on my on my skin, uh, the Cowboys from Hell logo as well. It's, Maybe it's because it's one of my favorite bands ever. This is totally a must-have, of course. Must-have for every metal head, every metal butt, every metal body. This is not a metal record at all. This is You Are What You Is from Frank Zappa. This album is really cool because uh, it's, it's seamless. All the songs run into each other. There's no breaks in between songs. When you throw on this record, it's like uh, it's one long song. There's a lot of uh, crazy music on it that is difficult to play. And um, the musicianship on this record is super top notch. And a lot of the lyrics are really funny. Some might find the lyrics on this record offensive, but um, those people can go get fucked because it's funny and uh, <laughs> it's meant to be funny. Um, there's a great song on this record called, well, there's, there's two great songs that I really, really love on this record. One is called Dumb All Over, and um, it, it's talking about religion, and there's one great line in this song where he says, uh, in, in the book it says that we're all made to be just like him, so if we're dumb, then God is dumb and maybe even a little bit ugly on the side. There's also, uh, <laughs> well, you just have to listen to the whole record. It's funny and the musicianship is really cool, production's awesome, and uh, Frank Zappa's a legend. This guy released like over 70 records in his life. It's really weird, um, but that's the way I like it. And it's awesome, looks awesome. Best mustache in history. Yes. Just. So okay, I, I'm I'm coming with another heavy metal classic. It's probably my favorite record from Megadeth and one of my favorite bands. I think it's the, this is like a piece of art of the Bay Area thrash metal. But I think for the whole heavy metal scene, it's like uh, everybody should. Listen to this. Is I think the um, the way they are playing the solos is insane here. It's like Marty Freeman. yes, Marty Freeman and even the, the Dave Mustaine as well. Yeah. It's like the, they are crossing the solos like crazy. Like for example in Engar Engar 18. The whole band's on fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. And I can't imagine. I would like to go back in the past and watch them recording that song when they were recording the solos. <laughs> like what the fuck they are doing? It's like. They, they should have fun with that, or maybe they were fighting, I don't know, but it's <laughs> it's crazy, it's really crazy. I think it's, it's one of the best heavy metal albums ever, and even it's not my favorite album from Megadeth, but I think it's uh, it's um, it's like uh, something in, the, in between everything, and this is a... Uh, like one of the chapters in the heavy metal Bible. Yeah, exactly. I, I, I would prefer the So Far So Good So What because uh, it, I really like more than that album because uh, it means much more for me. But uh, musically, this is a masterpiece, of course. And as you say, they, they, they were on fire recording the, that album. It's, it's incredible, really. Yes, uh, speaking of musicians that are on fire, um, 
This is from a band called Death. This was Death's last record, The Sound of Perseverance. And um, <laughs> the very first time I heard this record, uh, it starts out with just the drums. And um, first time I heard it, uh, my head nearly exploded because I couldn't <laughs> quite grasp exactly what the fuck was going on. Um, and then the guitar kicks in and it gets super heavy and this record is insanely technical and the musicianship is pretty, it's still impressive every time I listen to this record. And uh, the funny thing is the drummer that's on this is Richard Christie. And Richard Christie is a really killer drummer but he makes a living making prank phone calls on the Howard Stern show. <laughs> um, I really love the drums on this record because it's not just cool, cool beats. Um, he's playing stuff that's so technically almost impossible that he's not just a good drummer on this record. He's like a master of gravity. There's so many ghost notes and so many weird uh, nuances in the playing. This record blows my mind every time I listen to it. And uh, in my opinion, this is... Uh, the best death record and I don't I, I would have loved to have seen what they did after this unfortunately Chuck Schuldiner died and uh, we'll never know but I think this record was way ahead of its time and a lot of the riffs on this record th this came out in 98 and a lot of the riffs on this record sound like uh, riffs that were coming out in like 2010 2012 uh, from like more modern bands so uh, I'm not sure if they were inspired by this record but uh, or if this just somehow was magically ahead of its time and people didn't realize but uh, this is definitely a classic in my book and one of my favorite metal records of all time I agree. completely agree it's like uh, actually uh, uh, it happened the same for me with, uh, when when I listened the first time the, the drums were like... It was like, what? <laughs> okay, okay, play it slow, please. Yeah, yeah. Play it again. And, uh, and after that I got into death, uh, definitely. And then into Control Denied as well. Yeah. Another masterpiece. So I, I, I had Scream Bloody Gore and I liked it, but then I heard this and I was like, this is the same fucking band? <laughs> <Yes>. What? <laughs> it sounds like a completely different band. Um, the way this band evolved and, uh, in my opinion, kept getting better. So, uh, gone way too soon, but good thing they left this behind. Yeah, I think he won completely with this album. So, I'm done. Goodbye. Adios. Señores, adios. If you're still watching this, thanks for watching it. And listen to Angelus Apatrida and listen to Havoc. Yes, and Havoc. And hola Pete.